A package has arrived. Hooray. Right, let's see what's in here. That's not a knife. This is a knife. Aha, it's the first of four boxes of copper slip to put the suspension back on the Rover. Well, it probably should be, but no, this is my beautiful new coilovers back from Gaz. Oh, I can't wait to see these things. My knife again. Oh my God, these things are, well, the springs look original, but everything else looks like brand new. That is, that's one of the real ones. That is a thing of beauty. Look at this, zinc coated black. That is lovely. Oh, the adjustable multi-click. Let's look at our front one. Well, they're well packed, if nothing else. And this is the front one. Oh, the front ones have got new springs on them. So to keep costs down of a refurb, they've reused what they can. So they've reused the original casings um, and zinc coated them so they look virtually like new. They've reused the original rear springs but put new springs on the front. They've had to replace all of these struts on all four apparently because they were a bit pitted but they've reused the top mounts as well. So the top mounts are the orig original, which has, again, saved money. So this whole process is way cheaper than buying a new set of struts for your car. Same as fitting tires or shop absorbers in any regular situation, always do things in pairs. So it's got a pair of original matched coil springs and a pair of new matched coil springs at the front. Oh, I'm so happy. I can't wait to get these on the car. Would you look at these things? These are just beautiful. I could have gone for a zinc, like a brassy colored zinc coating, but I kind of felt that as the black is slightly more long lived, I would go with that. I can't wait to get these coilovers back on this Rover. There are three reasons I'm very excited. First of all, I really want to drive it again. Second of all, it's massively in the way. If you look at the front window, all you can see is the roof of this car, and it's kind of in the way of the front door and the side gate, so that'd be not quite nice to move. And I've been good to get back into the garage again without having to play, you know, parkour over car wheels, and I'll be able to get the Alpha out again, which has been quite nice, because that's been trapped there for the last oh, best part of a month. So yeah, I, I'm meant to be working today, but the sun's sort of out and it's not raining, which is nice. So I'm gonna get this thing onto some wheels, as, well, as many wheels as I can, before I've gotta go and do an actual job of work and earn some money to pay for all this stuff. I'm on Patreon, by the way, if you'd like to see more of this stuff and me not go and do boring actual work. All right, I'm gonna start at the front just because I'm here at the front. Um, First question is, which one is which of these shock absorbers? Try and work out which one went where. I can't remember if they're handed or not. Yeah, they are handed, yeah. Just need to work out which hand is which. Now, I seem to remember this tag facing forwards, probably. So let's try this and see if it matches up okay this way around. Oops. Try and get this through here. And pop one of these on there just to hold it steady. Now, unsurprisingly, I do seem to have lost three of these nuts. I don't know how, because I put them on the floor mat of the car, and the car's been locked for the last three weeks. So I don't know where they've gone. Right, let's break out the grease. Yeah, so I seem to remember this tag going at the front so I could fit this uh, brake line to it. So I'll just quickly a bit of copper slip onto the base of the coilover strut itself so then if it has to come out again in the future uh, it won't cause such a fight as it did before this is wonderful stuff you use it everywhere you use it for cooking don't use it for cooking i don't want to get sued Now, 
don't know if it's normal of doing this thing or not, but having this on a trolley jack makes it so much easier to just manoeuvre it precisely into position because you can get the angle just right on the hub and just glide it up so it takes the strain and you can wiggle it around and get this just right just where you want it perfect another twitch on that and we're good there we go so that's all good to go um, let's put the uh, the link arm in. If I just lift this one more tweak, that puts us in exactly the right place for that. This is so much easier. Put some copper slip on the drop link bolt as well, because I don't want that thing seizing up on me either. That one is a 13 millimeter. Now I will go and check the torque spec on these in a moment before I put the wheel back on. Right now, I'll just do it to two Okadogas. One Okadoga, two Okadoga. There we go. Now, was there a washer? That might have been a large washer with a hole. Oh, I can't find it for now. So now, this thing smeared liberally in copper slip because I don't want to fight one of these things again. I'm a bit more on there. Moron. I know I'm a moron. I get told it every day. Ha ha. I think there's meant to be a washer with a tag on it so I can attach that, uh, what is that, ABS line I think, to the strut, but I, I seem to be missing it. I think it may have rotted off. I seem to recall cable ties. Well now this is all fresh and easy to put back together again. It won't be a big issue to whip that out when I find it. Cable tie it today. I'm trying to get the wheels on really. Because the other thing I need to be doing is setting all these things up. Because at the moment, they're not set up at all. So hopefully they're all kind of set up roughly in the middle. But then I'm going to get the MOT done so I can drive it and then fine tune them all. That's, oh, that's a three I got to go on there. Where the previous owner of this car got this but it's this is volume two of two and you see how thick this is it's the actual workshop manual for the rover 200 and 400 series and it's invaluable what it tells me here though is i need to be tightening the hub to damper bolt the pinch bolt is 80 newton meters and the drop link is 45 newton meters very handy information mm, 80 newton meters that's a lot of ugaduggers now that looks amazingly good it is just so nice and shiny and pristine i really wish i painted that top link now it looks a bit shabby in comparison <laughs> i think i forgot to do it but that arch just looks beautiful that shock looks oh i kind of wish i had done it in gold now because that would have looked so bright and pretty in there oh gaz you guys are the best i can't wait to get this thing on the road and try it again And this one slipped in just as easily with just a small amount of percussive persuasion and a little bit of force from underneath. Like a glove, maybe? That's side two done. Although I do still need to reattach that because that's a bit tight. I'll find a bolt for that in a minute and reattach that as well because that's also loose. And once the wheel is on and I can move the car, I will go and tackle that track right in down there because I can't actually get to it to undo it with this post in the way. But that's two sides two wheels to go on, but I've just noticed that this, um, what do you call it, heat shield, dust shield, whatever, whatever you want to call it, is straight and not bent, and the one on the driver's side has clearly taken a whack when I was trying to get the, uh, the bolts undone, so I kind of need to go and straighten up the one on the other side before the wheel goes on. There we go. That's now straightened, now has a nut on it, which is, I think, left over from one day -O EGR attempts to fix. Anyway, old times. Now to get the wheel on, and I'll cable tie that later because I can't find a bolt for that. That's starting to look a bit like a car again now. I'm quite pleased with that. Progress. Oh, it's actually a week since I started doing the fronts, and I had to take a slight pause because, being me, I'd lost these things. I couldn't find them anywhere. I had one when I took these things off the car because I thought about taking it with me to Gaz because, you know, 
why wouldn't Gaz have one of the spanners they make? Um, but no, I didn't. I left it somewhere at home, and then when I came to fit these things, I couldn't find it anywhere. And then in order to fit the back shocks, you have to wind the spring up a little bit higher to clear the lower um, anti-roll bar. And so without it, I couldn't do a thing. Fortunately, Gaz posted me actually two of these now, so I can uh, so now I can get these things adjusted enough to fit into the car and uh, get the wheels on. Let's do that. So I've wrapped the nicely anodized um, forks at the bottom of this in paper, just a little bit of card, just to protect it and keep it clamped in the vise for me. I can just wind this up a few turns. Oops. And then hopefully I can get this spring short enough that I can get this into the car. Well, I so say hopefully. It came out of the car, it should definitely go short enough. Because when I bought these, they were actually second hand and they came from a uh, Rover 200 Cabriolet. And so the heights and everything were preset for that car, which is the same rear suspension as the coupe. So apart from a couple of adjustments to the, uh, the firmness of the ride, I've never adjusted anything else on these. Oh, this is a doddle, this is so easy, actually. I was kind of half thinking this might be a bit of a pain to do or a bit difficult, but you know, with the, the resistance of the spring, but the thread is such that it really isn't at all hard to do. This is like a Rover slash Honda trailing arm setup. I need to put these little forks over, over this bush in this link, and these two pins here, or bolts, whatever you want to call them, go through this oval shaped aperture here in the top of the strut tower into the boot where I can then bolt them up from inside the trunk. Boot. Load space. Not long enough. Short enough, that's the word. Ah, oh, don't know it. I reckon about another five or ten turns would do that. Yeah, that's not actually installed, but it is ready to go in. This is ready to go through there. That's ready to fit over the things. It was actually 25 turns it took to uh, just adjust it up enough to clear this and make it all fit. But once it's all installed, I can set the ride height correctly, get the car on level ground and put all four springs to a nice level height that I'm happy with. Same as the front, it makes a huge difference having that jack underneath it. Easy, nice two simple bolts bolted up. There you go. Percussive Systems, I believe it's called. So after a lot of adjustment with hammer, jack, screwdrivers, I finally managed to get the um, bottom hole of this link lined up with the bottom of the shock. Now a 13mm socket, hopefully I can tighten it into the bottom of the car. Now because this recess is up inside, what I'm going to do is use a big socket. There we go, to just give that a little push up inside there. And if that's lined up okay, which it almost has, I can put the bolt through. Just tightening up this drop link. And that is basically everything. It's amazing how you find certain cars this one I can do almost everything with a 13 and a 15 mil socket or spanner. The um, Hyundai, it was a 12 and a 14 and the occasional 10. There we go. Now, just one wheel left to do, it's the other side of this. I'm not going to bother filming it because it just started raining and I don't want to ruin the camera and you've just seen me do one anyway, so we'll cut to the end of this in a minute. I'm going to do some work now. It has been so useful having these big draper stands as part of my garage armoury for the last few weeks. And, uh, but now it's time to get the car off them and back on its wheels.
lucky this car is really, really very rigid indeed because it was balancing on two jacks and nothing else for a minute there. As I say, it's lucky this car is very rigid indeed because just then it was resting on the two wheels on one side and just the front stand. I haven't run this car in weeks, so let's see if it... Well, that was predictable. And neutral. Yay! Ow. Right, take two. What? I'm not going to go too far, even up the drive, because the tr track rod end on the front passenger side is basically held on by luck, but I want to give the suspension just a chance to just even itself out after being up in the air for so long. So as it now stands, this has basically been put back to stock ride height because I haven't adjusted the suspension yet. This is literally, as the suspension from Gaz came out of the box and was slapped straight on the car, it is now quite, quite, quite high really. This will be rectified very soon indeed. But at least it is sitting relatively square. I think it's a little higher on the rear drivers than the rear passenger. Yeah, look. So I can get, hang on, let's do the hand test. That's three fingers on the passenger side. Oh, it's three fingers of voice. It's got optical illusion. It's three and a a one turn difference. I haven't really given the thermostat a chance to see if it works or not yet either, because um, the engine hasn't run really since I changed that a few weeks ago. This is always entertaining. I'm going to try and reverse the thing back into the space where it came from, and it's millimetre precise. You have to swing the car around. Oh well, oh, got that roof has sagged even worse than it was before. God, look at the state of that rear window. That's disgusting. And this roof has just sagged completely. I'm going to take this out now. The car's back on its wheels. Oh, I'm going to take this roof lining out and uh, see if I can do anything with that, because that is quite annoying. I can't really see much past it now. So my jobs on this car now are fix the track rod end on the front passenger wheel because uh, I can't really drive it anywhere with that as loose as that because it's held on by like three, three turns of the nut thread or two turns of the nut thread and luck. Um, and so I'm not going to make it to an MOT station with like that or even a garage like that. So I to sort that out. But now I can actually move the car away from the wooden post, take the wheel off completely and actually do the job. So that would be fun. Um, then I'll need to sort out the suspension, set it down to a nice lower level and get the ride. What I want is a nice kind of sporty but comfortable ride. I'm going to show you this. I'm just going to show you this because this is what I'm trying to get past. Now I can crank the wheel over to the right, get the front of the car tight to the post, and not go back too far because I might either hit the front of the house or the Alfa Romeo behind me. Well, thank you for watching this very short episode of putting the Rover Tomcat back on its wheels. A huge thank you to Gaz, because it looks like they've done an outstanding job of rebuilding my coilovers to as new condition, basically. So this car is gonna drive immensely well, so much better than it has done in a very long time indeed. And thank you again to them as well for posting a spanner out so I can actually put the things back on the car. Um, I'm now gonna go and have a cup of tea and get cleaned up. And uh, yeah, 
<sighs> and look forward to driving this car in the very near future. There's only a couple of things really to do for the MOT now, so I'll see you again very soon.